Some of my colleagues told me I should put together a video about getting captions onto YouTube videos. I have a video uploaded and it needs captions, so let me show you how I do it. I'm going to assume you already know how to get your video onto YouTube. If you don't, there are a lot of resources out there, or, um, you know, if enough people ask, I could make a video about that too. Uh, but let's get started. So go to YouTube Studio and sign in if you haven't already. Click on the video icon on the left and find the video you want to caption. In this case, I'm working on the text expander video, so I hover and find the details icon. Click that. This takes you to the basic video details page. Click on more options. About halfway down, find original video language, subtitles, and CC. If the language isn't already listed, if you haven't already identified a default language in your preferences, you'll need to click on the down arrow and select the appropriate language. In my case, it's US English. Now YouTube is creating its automatic captions. You'll see it listed here. Click on the three dots next to English by YouTube and choose Edit on Classic Studio. And here we are, ready to edit YouTube's captions. I'll walk you through the different parts of this screen, but before I do, I want to point out a couple of things. First, YouTube does a pretty good job on its own. As an English teacher, I write the same thing on paper after paper. If you're in a situation like that, if you find yourself writing the same thing over and over and over again, I've got a tool for you. It's not good enough, it doesn't capitalize words, and it doesn't include punctuation, both of which are important for clarity. But setting that aside, it transcribes pretty accurately, especially if you don't use a lot of specialized language, like you might in, say, biology or philosophy. In any case, you're going to want to edit this, so go to the upper right and click on Edit. There are two versions of the caption file. One version is here on the left. It has the time code and text. You can ignore the time code. I'll show you why in a second. But this is where we'll type corrections to the text. The second version is below the video. It has the same information as the file on the left, but it presents the time code visually. So when I hover over the first box, these blue bars appear. I look at the beginning time code here, 00 0.5, and if I grab this and drag it, you can see that the time code changes. So, to sum up so far, if I need to change the text, I'll make the changes in this area. If I need to change the time code, when the particular caption will appear and disappear, I'll use the blue bars in the area below the video. Now, there are a few ways to move around the video. You can scroll down the caption file and click on a box. The video will jump to that section. Or you can scroll along the bottom. The video and the text on the left will jump to where the red playback head is. Or you can use the play bar on the video to scroll around. So let me show you how I do this. I start with the text. Capitalization, punctuation, spelling, transcription errors, whatever. Later, I'll look at the timing and the layout of the captions, but first, I want clean text. Okay, so the text I've done so far is now clean. And to be honest, it's probably pretty close. The captions are accurate, uh, they're grammatically correct. Uh, there's a timing problem with that tool is a program called Text Expander, but if I were in a hurry, I'd feel comfortable moving on for the most part. That said, little things bug me, and if they bug me, I can only imagine what a deaf or hard of hearing person would feel. So, I like to fine tune how the captions appear. So, back to the beginning. 
On this first caption, I don't like that this second sentence starts in that caption. It's not a big deal. It's not confusing. There'd be no problem moving on, but I'm picky, so I'm going to tweak it a bit. Besides, it gives me a chance to demonstrate a couple things that you'll probably need to do at some point. All right. I'm going to move the first part of the second sentence into the next caption. It's a simple cut and paste. Uh, you can use Control X, Control V, or you can drag and drop, whichever you prefer. Now when I make that change, the caption gets a little bit out of sync. As an English teacher, I write the same thing on paper after paper. If you're an you can see that I start the second sentence before the caption appears, so I use the blue handles to change the timing. Paper after paper. If you're in a situation... Okay, let's move to the next problem, which is a little more significant. The second sentence here is way, way early, so I'm going to need to move it into its own box and then adjust the timing so it appears at the right time. To move it to its own box, I put the cursor before the first word and hit enter. And then I move the blue handle over to where I start talking again, just in the ballpark at first, and then I can fine-tune it. That tool. I have one other thing I want to do. I want to add a caption for the typing sound effect. In this case, I want to add an empty box, so I click on the blue plus sign. Note that if you add a box accidentally, or uh, if you move text out of a box leaving it empty, you can get rid of it by clicking on the blue X. Anyway, I hit the plus and type in the sound effect in square brackets. Then I drag the blue handle to where the sound effect ends. Now while I'm verifying that change, I'm noticing I don't like how U is here on its own line. So I replace the line break with a space, and it's just one line. And there we go. Now a couple quick tips. First, if you want to break a caption into two lines, like this, uh, you need to use a soft return. That is, a shift enter. If you use enter, it will usually create a new caption box, which we don't want. Second, the undo function, a control Z, only works with changes to the text. It won't work if you create a new caption or if you change the time code, including dragging those blue bars. The most time-consuming mistake I run into is when I'm creating a line break and hit enter instead of shift enter. I have to move the text back to the original caption. I have to delete the empty one, drag the blue bar back where it belonged. Anyway, once you're done, I click Save Changes and then Publish. This will overwrite the existing subtitles, the ones YouTube generated, with your corrections. You'll set the language, English in this case. If you're interested, you can set the default, so every future upload will have English as its default. I click Set Language, and there you have it. Captions that are accurate and in sync. Now, the process does take some time, especially if you're picky like I am, but once you're in the rhythm, once you remember to hit Shift-Enter instead of Enter, it goes by reasonably quickly. But I said I'd show you an additional step that can save you a lot of work. If you used a script to record your video, uh, I do that, unless it's a quick announcement or something, but if you used a script, you can upload it to YouTube, and YouTube will do a pretty good job syncing it. Uh, so how's that work? Well, the first step is to save your script as a plain text file. Uh, that's the file that ends in .txt. I write my script in Evernote, uh, then copy and paste the script into a text editor. I use Notepad++, but Notepad would work fine. I also spend some time editing the text file, especially if I know I deviated from the script a bit. It's much easier to edit in a text file than in YouTube. And the closer the script is to the actual video, 
the more accurate YouTube will be when it sets the time codes. Also, uh, just a quick tip as an aside, you can force YouTube to start a new caption by inserting a blank line in the text file. And once the script is clean, it's time to upload it. Make sure it's saved where you can find it, uh, and we'll start the same way as before. YouTube Studio, Videos, Details, More Options. When we first upload the video, the language here was set at not applicable. Again, in your settings, uh, you can set a default, but if you haven't done so, this is what it looks like. And you'll notice that this Upload Subtitle CC is grayed out. You can't select it yet. Uh, so again, we choose English. Then click on Upload Subtitle CC. Choose Without Timing. It's just a script, so it's not time-stamped. And hit Continue. Find the file on your computer, click open, and there you go. English by you. Hit save. You'll see that it says processing. This may take a few hours. It's never taken more than a few minutes for me, though the longer the video, the longer the processing time. Um, I'll click the three dots and choose edit on Classic Studio. If it's not ready yet, you'll see this warning. You'll just need to try again a little later. This may seem a little annoying, but the amount of time and work saved editing the captions far outweighs the time spent waiting for it to process. And if you batch your videos, I try to film, edit, and upload several videos at a time. If you batch your videos, the later videos can all sync while you're working on the first. Once the processing is done, click on the three dots and select Edit on Classic Studio. Uh, you may see the subtitles not found warning. That's okay. It just means that your file hasn't been attached to the video yet. Choose the file that doesn't say automatic. Uh, that will open the View Published Subtitles and CC page, which should look familiar. You can see how much closer this is. As an English teacher, I write the same thing on paper after paper. If you're in a situation like that, if you find yourself writing the same thing over and over and over again, I've got a tool for you. I'll need to address some of the timing, but that's a matter of dragging the blue bars around. If I deviated from the script, as I often do, and didn't fix it in the text file, I'll need to fix that. But you know, this is much closer. There's a lot less to fix. So there you have it. Uh, that's how I handle captions in YouTube. It adds a bit of time to the process, and for sure the process is already time consuming, but uh, I think it's worth it, and you know, I'd do it even if it weren't a legal requirement. Uh, so I hope this helped. Uh, let me know in the comments, and I'll see you around.